without too much difficulty uh, with that. Before I start, I just uh, before I start, I just want to thank the uh, officers uh, in your program. You'll see the officers listed for the Rome Memorial Day Association, the Veterans Council, the City of Rome, people who set up the sound system, whatever the case might be. I want to make sure that I do that right at the very beginning and thank them for the program we're going to see today always involves a lot of hard work set up in advance and they meet a number of times to get it all together. Even though the program is pretty much the same every year, we usually come up with little tweaks here and there and even if you don't, you still need to meet and get it together. So I want to thank all of those people for uh, being part of, uh, part of this today. Armistice, uh, the agreement was signed in 1918 marking the stoppage of World War I. The very first Armistice Day was a year later in 1919. It became a federal holiday in 1938. And then following World War II and the Korean War, it officially becomes Veterans Day. So that's why we're all here today. And uh, very important to recognize all veterans. One other note before we start. Also, 2 p.m. today, the Vietnam War Vets and the program at the Memorial. Uh, I assume that's still on uh, at the Griffiths Business and Technology Park. 2 p.m. today, that program uh, observance at the Vietnam Memorial here. I'd now like to call up uh, Father Sean O'Brien and he is scheduled to be uh, do our invocation this morning. What does he have, so? oh, He must still be asleep. <laughs> and I don't see him. Father O'Brien? Okay, I will, uh, I don't see him, so I will I'll lead this myself, and I don't see him coming either, so I will assume he got tied up. Dear Lord, we ask you be with this gathering today, our Veterans Day observance. Move in the hearts and minds and souls of all of us to remember the strife that we face from day to day, from month to month, and from year to year. We continue to fight, we continue to work for good, and sometimes it's really difficult. But with your help, we know we can persevere and see it through. Lord, bless all of us. We thank you for this day and for our gathering here this morning. Amen. Next up, I know she's here, the mayor of Rome. Jackie is on. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. I think this has got to be the best weather we've ever had on a Veterans Day. Normally, we're standing here and the wind is blowing, it's raining, it's snowing, and everything else. So, uh, today, for just a little while, the Lord is shining down here on all of our vets. You know, we. We are a military community, uh, and we're proud of that. And so our veterans are impermeated in our everyday life, in our community, in our families, and everywhere we look, we can probably find a vet. And that's really something to be proud of. So today really is just a day to say thank you to them. And I also see in our audience our Assemblywoman Marianne Buttonshan and Senator Joe Griffo. I want to thank them for being here this morning. So really, today is a day to say thanks, and it, obviously, our veterans that are with us today, they, they were able to make it home, and uh, their service certainly was never in vain, and they fought for this country and continue to fight for the country. And we also need to remember those that are still on active duty, because they are taking up that sword every day to protect our freedom. So to all of our veterans, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for protecting our freedom and fighting for our flag. And we're joined this and morning by EADS personnel. I wish all of you a I wonderful Veterans Day today. I want to remind everybody that the flags are flown in honor of all veterans. The 
raising of the colors will honor all veterans with our EADS personnel today. And the Canadian Honor Guard uh, will, is here as well, Sergeant Brian Buffington and Master Corporal Jeff uh, Feenstra from the Canadian Honor Guard uh, representing the Canadian Detachment at Griffiths. Directly following that, we will have our national anthem and the Canadian national anthem. Anne Wright and uh, Carl Wilson are here, ready to sing. I do invocations when I have to, but I can't sing the Canadian national anthem and I can't sing the national, I'm glad you're here, believe me. But uh, Anne Wright and Carl Wilson will do that and then we'll proceed with the uh, second half of our program. Again, Mayor, thank you uh, for being here this morning and now we'll continue with the official retiring of colors. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks and who gave up a portion of his or her life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature as American citizens trusting in God it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war. 
for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country for the words of Stephen Dakar, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is where our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who has entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day to honor our mother, from whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he, had, he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since he or she was first born. The eleventh fold is in the eyes of the Hebrew citizens, represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon, and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of the Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies. In their eyes, God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit Ghost. When the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked, it has the appearance of a cocked hat, even reminding us of the soldiers who served under God, General George Washington. By their commands and shipmates in the U.S. Armed Forces, preserving for us the right, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. It can hurt my own division.
his early light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner So that'll be two minutes right at 11 o'clock. All of us will stop and pause for that amount of time. And I'm thinking since we're getting real close with that, maybe we'll hold off on uh, starting our, our guest speaker. We have Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Wiseman, uh, who is with us this morning, and he is going to be our guest speaker rather than just letting him speak for 60 seconds at the most and then having that interrupted. I think we'll wait until after our two minute pause coming up at uh, 11 o'clock. In the meantime, I do want to thank all of the participating organizations today and I don't need to read them all, but they're in your bulletin and they're in the program this morning, listed all as participating organizations. Very, very important to this operation that they be here. We have the various posts, and we have the Knights of Columbus and the school district cadets. And uh, I see Della Prey is here uh, with people from ROTC. And we really appreciate all of your contributions. So thank you for turning out as usual today, each of them listed in uh, your program for today. Also, again, to the Rome Memorial Day Association and the Veterans Council, great work during the year on behalf of veterans, um, helping us remember those who have died, obviously, on Memorial Day, and then remembering all veterans today. A lot of hard work goes on with that in between the, uh, uh, the events that we have, Memorial Day in May, obviously today in November. Also, uh, for those of you who have, have come uh, within the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes, I do want to give uh, an announcement again about 2 o'clock this afternoon. The Vietnam War veterans have an observance at the Memorial at the Griffiths Business and Technology Park. Everyone certainly invited to that 2 p.m. today. We're marking Armistice Day, the marking of the stoppage of the agreement signed in 1918, officially uh, 
ending the World War, at least ending the hostilities of World War I. The very first Armistice Day back in 1919, a federal holiday in 1938, and then, as I mentioned before, following World War II and the Korean War, it officially becomes Veterans Day. Our guest speaker this morning is Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Wiseman from the Canadian Detachment. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Wiseman enrolled in the Canadian Armed Forces back in 2002 as an aerospace control officer. He has completed tactical assignments at the Eastern Air Defense Center, we know as EADS here in Rome, Canadian Fleet Pacific, the Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City, and the Western Air Defense Sector in Tacoma, Washington. He has a number of staff assignments, uh, including the um, Executive Assistant to the Wing Commander at the 22nd Wing CFB in North Bay and Deputy Commanding Officer of Canadian Detachment Tinker and DCO of Canadian Detachment Watts. He has deployed, uh, he was deployed for uh, domestic and international operations, including Operation Noble Eagle in support of North American Aerospace Defense, Operation Martillo in support of Central and South American counter drug operations, and Operation Interhet Resolve in support of military intervention against ISIS. Lieutenant Colonel Wiseman holds a bachelor's degree in science from Memorial University of Newfoundland, a master's degree in science from Southeastern Oklahoma State University, and is a graduate of the Joint Command and Staff Program. He commanded Canadian Forces recruiting in the Atlantic region from 2019 to 2021, and officially assumed command here in Rome of the Canadian Detachment back in July of this year. Lieutenant Colonel Wiseman ends. He says he is fortunate to share his life with his wife, uh, Marika Wiseman, and their two sons, Jack and William. So I would like to now welcome to the podium our guest speaker this morning, Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Wiseman. Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, the Gold Star Mothers, uh, Mayor Izzo, uh, Colonel Bishop and Chief Zoldi, the command team from the Eastern Air Defense Sector, ladies and gentlemen. 
uh, it is an honor to be here today. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to join you today and to be a part of your Remembrance Day and Veterans Day uh, ceremony. Every November, Americans and Canadians pause to honor the achievements and sacrifices of those who have served our countries in uniform. Generations of veterans and their families have stood tall in times of need to ensure that all of us can live in free and peaceful countries and a better world. Sometimes that means training our allies abroad so that they can keep their people safe or joining peacekeeping missions when tensions are high. Sometimes it means helping out at home when there's a natural disaster or an emergency, whether it's a flood, a forest fire, or now a pandemic. And sometimes it means going to war to defend what we hold dear. A little history, as we heard earlier, our shared date marks the armistice that ended the First World War. In 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the war to end all wars came to an end. Canada, a nation of a little more than 7 million people at the outbreak of the war, paid a steep price. It lost 67,000 killed and another 250,000 wounded in four years of conflict. We Canadians wear the poppy as our symbol of remembrance, a blood red flower. It still blooms amid the World War I battlefields of France and Belgium. For the United States, in the First World War, in a year of combat, lost 53,000 men and experienced 60,000 non-combat deaths, caused chiefly by an influenza outbreak in 1918. As New Yorkers, this anniversary has special meaning. More than 400,000 New Yorkers, the largest number from any state, served in the military during World War I. Some of the war's most famous American units come from the New York National Guard. The 15th New York Infantry, an African-American regiment who would fight on its own under French command and become a fam as known famously as the 369th Infantry Regiment, better known as the Harlem Hellfighters. When we talk about Canadian strength and sacrifice on the battlefield, the Battle of Vimy Ridge comes to mind. 15,000 Canadian troops have been given a job of taking back Vimy Ridge, a heavily fortified spot in northern France under enemy control. Attempts to reclaim the ridge by British and French forces had already been failed. But the Canadians spent months preparing. They fought for four grueling days and nights until they were victorious. But nearly 3,600 Canadians lost their lives. Another 7,000 were wounded. This was a key moment in the First World War, and it has become a defining moment in our country's history. This event occurred some 104 years ago. So remembering, over the years, the day marking the World War I armistice has evolved in its meaning and now serves to honor all our veterans, not just those who served in World War I. I'd like to reiterate the advice of a former EADS commander passed to those here in attendance several years ago, right here on November 11th, that as we gather at these monuments across Canada and the U.S., I ask you to remember that our veterans whether they served 104 years ago or as recently as last week. They were not made of stone, marble, or steel, like the monuments we gather around today. The men and women we remember today were of flesh and blood. Those in combat suffered physically, while their families at home suffered emotionally. For those who didn't return, their death was not a statistic, but an intensely personal tragedy felt forever by their families and those close to them. These days, stories of courage and compassion from members of our two militaries are inspiring whole new generations of Canadians and Americans. Because the truth is, the job of protecting freedom and keeping us safe is never really done. There are always new challenges to face and new missions to support, both at home and abroad. Members of our militaries continue to lead, and they continue to serve, supporting peace and democracy, helping vulnerable people, and making the world a better place for everyone. I'm very proud to serve. I'm very proud to be a member of the Eastern Air Defense Sector here in Rome. And I'm very proud of our young service members in attendance today, for you are our future. A future provided 
by our veterans. So, today, for the selfless service of our veterans who came before us, I ask everyone here today to listen to our veterans' stories, understand their sacrifices, and together let's continue to honor those three sacred words, lest we forget. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for slowing the rain clouds. We ask, Lord, that you watch over and bless all those here today, all veterans and their families. And as we remember those who have served, we ask, Lord, that you send your blessing down upon and protect those who currently serve. Those in the Army and the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, 
the Coast Guard and the Merchant Marines and the newly formed Space Force, as well as our Canadian brothers and sisters in uniform and our allies throughout the world. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. storm clouds gather far across the sea let us swear allegiance to a land that's free let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountain. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. She's got one. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet.